that you are going to learn so much today and <laughs> blow your mind. Better? Yeah. I don't think she's going to have to talk that loud. I was just just uh, the old shot there. Test, test. Test, test. The warmth of the suns touched my face. Hmm. Is that part of your presentation or is that left behind by something else? <sighs> Oh, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, the books are so nobody thinks that you're going to teach them. About the warmth of the about sun. About the warmth of the sun. <laughs> the sun. Okay. All right. <laughs> am I doing aerobics or am I doing interacting to you? Whichever one, I think will look best on you. So I would undo your button and then redo it. So I can get this part to be in that. Redo it. And you can decide whether you prefer it for that pocket. We can put it there. Um, however, you want to just go ahead and put my. I would put it on there because that way yeah. this thing kind of pokes out and it won't be like. Yeah, you could absolutely look. You could even you could do it you could do it like this so that it's like attached to a pocket. Um, was is there a remote for these screens? You mean uh, a pointer thing? No, like an uh, actual remote for like the screens themselves. How do you turn that on and off? Or is that all Through this panel. Like, so, so, so she's using, she's using this. I'm going to look at it. I just don't look at it. <laughs> She's going to use this for her presentation slides, and then there's going to be like a little tiny square off to the side for um, her Zoom people, guitar people. I just have a very basic knowledge of how this operates. So you, what you do is you hit these first, and then you determine what wall you want to display on. So yeah. I'm going to display on that too. So wall, to, I'm just like wondering if there's a way to turn down the brightness of the, the lights wall. in the room. No, of this, of this wall, of these screens. So, uh, but I'm guessing not. Wall number two. Well, there is a there is a setup. Um, wall two on. That's your <laughs> the extent of your options on that screen one. Screen up, screen down. Uh, some audio stuff. Um. You know what I wonder um, is whether if she's on this, um, there's a way to do it from there. You could just this screen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really just like because you just want it, like the screen will just be blown out. That's, I mean, that's pretty much how it is everywhere, well, all the time. So just, here's here's what I would say: is let's just focus on. Let's make sure we just focus on Ginny because we have the slides. Yeah, maybe we do that. I mean, that's it's just if it was going to be easy, but it isn't, so. About it, no, but, like, but it should be easy. It should be, but there's clearly they don't intend for you to have any control on the screens. They're clearly like, don't even worry about it. Because mm -hmm. that little guy has no. Yeah. Because uh, this is your so. Is this like you choose your source down here? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then. The reason why I, I'm kind of like on edge about it is that when you press the wrong button, these screens go on and the projector goes on. Yeah, like it's like and then I don't really know how yes. I say we just leave it to retract them other than shutting the whole thing down. So oh, there's some screen up, screen down buttons. I think I got that part. But that's all I know. Uh, but yeah, I know that's like this is I guarantee you that each of these screens has their own remote somewhere that they have hidden away and they're like, don't think about this as televisions. They are no longer televisions. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, yeah, I think it's clearly, it's a good design in that all the people that come in here, it 
it just when you leave it shuts everything down yeah. and refreshes things so. oh it's good that way i did your piece so I'm just thinking, I'm hoping she is going to join first. You can close both of those and start open. Um, Go for it, so it's enough for just a I hate places like this. It's hard to feel. It's like it can be 7.1 all the way across the range, and yet as you've been still between 7.1 and 10. It's like, why couldn't you be at 7? This is a little chill out. Now it's actually. Are you going to be using that whiteboard at all? No. It's like red and has frost through it. That's your needle go away. I've only used this kit like once. So is it better if the light is slower? No. The brighter this light is, the closer to the same exposure as the screen okay. is for because the darker you are, the more blown out the screen is. Okay. Um, like I said, I mean, we'll be able to, if we want to put up the screen a little bit at the time, because we have the slides, so it's not that important to see the stuff. Okay. Should I put the pancake? Yeah. <laughs> well, then, then we could spotlight you, and then you'd be the exact same exposure level as the screen. But. I don't know that we uh, have that sort of lighting uh, equipment. Uh, there's a very scary looking red A in the corner of the screen. I don't know all the fun notification icons. Okay. So, um, that's because this is A and B for the cards, and you have to keep that closed to be able to. It won't register your SD cards until that little clock is closed. That's fine. Okay. And no, what was that? Huh? Mr. Tree. Yeah. It's my on screen dance. Sweet. Yeah. Clutch.
got to pay on the ground. Oh, shit. They down. They stay on my money. Uh, I mean, you found some money, so it's like kind of like So you guys uh, getting settled in to your workplace and tasks? Yeah. Yeah, we're still kind of like finishing off things that were kind of like half started oh, okay. a little bit, but like we're about to start your stuff. Yeah. How long have you each been here? Four weeks ish. Maybe like two weeks. Two weeks? Okay. I've been here a little over a year and uh mm -hmm. hello. Oops. Hello there. Can you hear me? Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Hi. Should you sit anywhere? Yeah, right in here. Um, there's better. We, we have it set up as a somebody joining us from the car. Um, so we kind of have to get to the area so that that person can be shaped a little bit. Seems like she's uh, testing her mic, or or she's just muted herself. Okay, did I mute myself, or can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you now. You want to turn it up a little higher? Okay. Is it Joan? Okay, is that better? I've got it at one hundred. You're a little muffled, but um, I can. I can hear you talking. Okay. You want to say something else? Okay. Um, what would you like me to say? Good evening. I'm Dean we, haven't, we haven't started yet, but I just want to make sure I can hear you. You're a little muffled, but it's it's better. Okay. I have it full blast. That's as high as it will go. Is there something over your microphone that's causing it to be muffled? Is that better? A little bit. Okay. Did you want to display your um, your video so we can see you? Okay. I knew it this, so. Well, this might be the beginning of our um, of our Zoom meetings that we have together, so it's good good to get started. Okay. Um, and also, I am working with a free version, and I understand it will exit me in 40 minutes, and I can restart, but there will be a glitch in there, I think. Okay, where is my... Mute my audio. Okay, so I can see your screen. 
I cannot start speaking while the other participant is sharing, okay? Can you see the presentation? I can, yes, and I can see you, but I cannot see me, and I don't know how to make me visible. You cannot see the presentation? I, I can see the presentation. I can see you, but uh, I'm on the shared screen, I am not seeing me. What is she not seeing? Um, me, myself. Welcome to the interactive video workshop. We're just um, working on uh, getting somebody connected remotely from Zoom. So oh, nice. Yeah. Um, I would say this is over here because since we are having people join us from Qatar, um, the presentation is really going to be focused this week so that the people in the car can see that camera. Okay. So, otherwise, you're going to be like, why does she never look over at me? <laughs> <laughs> and you get the couch. And go yeah. <laughs> are you going to record this thing? It is being recorded. What departments are you guys from? Um, we're from the Rehabilitation and Research and Training Center. We're under the School of Education. Right? Awesome. Are you teaching online classes? We are. What about you? Um, I am from the DC Arts Communication Project. So we're you know, working on more video projects and helping them uh, try some new things. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see you guys work for Awesome. Okay. Well, we'll get started in just a few minutes. Okay, I think there may be a problem with my webcam, and that's why I'm not coming through. I have to get them to check that. Um. Yeah, I'll be over here. Joy, did you, are you able to locate the chat? I'm sorry? There's a chat feature in Zoom, so if, um, actually I can hear you better then. It's just if you have any questions as we're going through this, I want to make sure I can, I can hear you. Thank you. Okay, very good. Welcome. This is an interactive video workshop. You don't mind just sitting over here? Sure. Um, I'm going to be kind of orienting myself towards the um, wall mounted video camera because we have somebody who's called in from the far. So uh, I'm going to be speaking to all of you, but I'm also going to be trying to connect. Um, yeah. You can sit anywhere from like here over. <laughs> okay. Is it just about me? It's exactly, exactly good. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, I just want to say that I'm um, Julie Thompson and I'm an instructor here at online. You all there? 
and I want to take a moment to recognize some of my colleagues that are here today. And um, Molly Ransom, she's sitting there with a the laptop, and she's the associate director of the media here at the Old Lab. And she's joined by uh, Sean Pollock, who's going to be filming uh, today, and Moaz Elvin, who is also a uh, media specialist. And they create video, and um, so they're, they've been um, a fantastic resource for me as I've been working on this workshop. And um, just want to explain a little bit about the inspiration behind this workshop. I have, um, for the last year, been working here um, primarily with the business school faculty. They have a dedicated media specialist, and, and they're generating professional creating video. And so I've been thinking a lot about taking video to the next step. Um, video now is a prominent part of both face-to-face -face and blended and online. And I started thinking that it's almost as though we're getting to video kind of 2.0, you know, web 2.0, you know, video 2.0. And now we're really interested in how to make it interactive. And why are we interested in making it interactive? One is that the first battle with our learners is we want them to be engaged as they're going through your video. So keeping them there, keeping their attention. So what are some strategies you can use to keep them engaged on the video? And then the other is that as educators, we're always concerned about making sure that students are doing the hard work of learning. And we want to build in scaffolds and supports to help them organize their understanding of the content they're presenting as well as to get them to practice and continually circle back and say, did I really grasp what was in the video? Um, so that's just a little blurb. Hopefully this, you, know, you feel like you're in the right place. Um, but I'd just like to take a minute, if everyone would mind, um, some of you already introduced yourselves, but had folks join us. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just saying who you are and how you use video. So it could just be using video, uh, YouTube videos in your class. Um, you could be creating your own video. Um, just explain very briefly um, how you're using it. So, sorry. Okay, um, I'm Terry and I work with Social Media Center. And we've been using video probably for online for a really long time. Plus years. I do. I use a lot of video. I use a lot of um, YouTube channel. Um, primarily, it's a lot of webcasts that we can archive. Mm -hmm. So it will be fun to have some interaction after mm -hmm. I archive it. Okay. Hi, Jim and I work with Terry at um, our PC and um, helping out with uh, the same. Mm -hmm. Great. My name is Tim Lundis, I'm an academic advisor at the School of Business, and I am just a store of video. I just I watch a lot of people. Um, but I'm here to learn more. I'm obviously um, contributing to the advising mission and hopefully being able to start on creating those restaurants. Our audience is kind of oriented around that small amount of video camps. Uh, and I'm Martha Harper, I'm a colleague of Sony Advisor in School of Business, but I'll add that you and I are um, working on a presentation for a conference in which we hope to use video narratives of particular population of students and uh, also to work for a national organization for um, adult learners and students for children, and we do online learning modules for professionals in higher ed who want to learn about that population. So I hope you can learn more here. Hi, I'm Caitlin Vertigo. I'm a senior faculty development specialist at the Center for Teaching and Learning Excellence. I am here to Hi, I'm Richard DiCicco. I'm the arts writer at BC School of the Arts and Communications Office. So we've been experimenting more with video lately. We have a couple of videos up, but we're trying some new ideas about showcasing how students work and having different focus to it and, you know, getting students and perspective students and alumni to feel more invested in video, um, both on social media and on YouTube. So I'm interested in learning some of the options that are available. Great. 
Great. And I just want to say um, kind of a caveat, we're going to be exploring three specific tools. And rather than overwhelm you with the many, many, many different tools for interactive video, um, we're going to be talking about best practices and highlighting tools. But it's not to say that there aren't many tools out there. I'm Isabel Bitchman. I'm the coordinator for the Religious Studies Program. I use video, YouTube videos and other videos in my classrooms all the time. I'm interested in doing a flip and so creating instructive and videos um, that I'm not actively care to do the teaching. And uh, I assign my students to do videos all the time. And they seem to do a great job. So I guess I'd like to know a little more. Great. Um, as I said, our folks, um, the media specialist folks in the back, they create awesome professional video. Um, I like this clip just because it reminds me of hmm, the idea that um, way back when that technology or um, TV was going to be educational for, for kids, and then they realized that just putting learners in front of TV was inherently a passive activity, and so I've come to the same conclusion now that we've got many, many YouTube videos out there, and um, we all know that we can feel very patient, uh, especially when we're in the online environment, so um, all the more reason to um, make things interactive. Um, so there's two parts to this workshop. Um, the first one is best practices for instructor-created video and what um, we have learned from the sciences. I'm going to talk about that first. And then second would be um, when you have a pre-existing video, how you can use active learning strategies and bring in overlay tools to make um, a learning experience more interactive. Okay, so what makes a good video? Um, just a quick review from um, research and learning sciences. There's four things I want to talk about, and the first is signaling. Signaling is when you create a video, you are going to pull out a few words and put them on your presentation, signaling to the learner, this is a presentation. Your job as an educator is to help the learner to isolate what's really important and to make connections between concepts. So as much as you can, try to, um, a, lot of, a lot of these tips are about um, helping the learner to avoid distraction. The other is segmenting and chunking. The best practices for creating a video is to keep the length of a video under six minutes. If you're gonna do longer than six minutes, then what you wanna do is add some things such as bookmarks or chapters so that the learner can navigate and make sense of the content of the video. Another strategy is meeting. There's, you've heard of the term death by PowerPoint. Um, up in time, um, I've, I've included in this that um, we get carried away with putting a lot of text on the screen and a lot of images, and really we need to pare things down. Um, we, um, an important thing to keep in mind is that learners retain more auditory information and less of what's on the screen. So sparing is what's on the screen. Finally, um, matching modality. This is a pretty simple concept. Um, and I've got my two images here on the screen. Um, the first is what I call talking head, uh, instructor lecturing. And then we've got an image here of an instructor writing on the screen, or there's a chart or diagram. So matching modality. So when it makes sense for you to be speaking versus when it makes sense for you to have an image on the screen and you're narrating. So that's called matching modality. So it might seem like um, some common sense um, ideas, but it's just important things to keep in mind. And what I can do, um, if you want to just put your email on this piece of paper, I can add you to the presentation if you want to document it. Okay, so I thought I'd just give you an example of what I'm talking about. 
And this is um, a video that was created in conjunction um, with Molly Ransone and our all lab. And the faculty member is Laveria Carter. She created this video on open government. And I feel that it illustrates some of these things I'm just talking about. Welcome to the virtual overview of open government. In this video, we will explore the definition of open government and social government, review of the open government spotlight, in particular, I will have people to say what it is. And finally, we'll discuss some of the opportunities and challenges of the open government. Right? So I would say that at this point, she's framing her presentation and she's signaling to the learner that there's an organization to the way she's presenting the content. So that's a strategy. When you're creating your own video, a best practice is actually just script out what you're gonna say. Um, and so this is signaling to the learner how, how the content is organized. I'm gonna go ahead um, a little further. Keep these opposing views in mind as we discuss open government, which you would think we see value in both. We will come back to this discussion towards the end of the video when we explore the transparency. Again, again, very simple, but I just think highlighting transparency paradox. It's an example of a meeting where you're signaling important information, stripping away the extraneous in inputs. And then a little later on um, in her video, she has a timeline. This video is on the same level. In the US, the Medicaid Statistics Freedom of Information establishes the public's right to obtain information from federal government. Through this act, every citizen of the United States gains the right to. Just very simply, I would say this is an example of matching modality where she has some important visuals and she's switching from the top of the head and now um, she's narrating. Um, there. Okay, so what I want to do now is transition in the presentation to active learning strategies and um, these strategies that you can employ when you're either creating videos or, or using videos. And very simply, what is active learning? The way I look at it is that we as educators were transitioning from transmitting information to creating um, learning experiences where we're helping students to develop their own understanding of content and developing skills. Um, so now we're going to focus um, the rest of this workshop on these four strategies, three strategies, right? Um, that you can employ um, your, your use of video, so use of guiding questions, use of interactive features that students can control the video, and also um, bringing in those questions into the video. Um, again, I'm going to highlight a video from Lavaria Carter, and this one's on Swark Cities. And this is an example of a guiding question that has been built into the script. Welcome to this virtual overview of small cities. In this video, we will explore five key questions. First, why should we even study smart cities? What is a smart city? What are the components of a smart city? What are some examples of smart city initiatives? And finally, what are some of the societal implications? So let's get started. So she goes on to present her information. There isn't any other interactivity in this video um, after that, but obviously you could take this video as a instructor and you could ask your stu students to respond to those questions in a journal, blog, or what have you, some other way. So there's, there's multiple ways that you can um, 
kind of piggyback on the questions that she's put in the video there. So that's one option. Um, another option is um, there's a, a free tool called Video Court, and it was created at the University of Minnesota. And what I'm going to show you um, is an example that I created for faculty members teaching an undergraduate one credit course in psychology that's looking at the science behind the um, popular cultural popular culture portrayal of romance and uh, addiction. And one of the assignments is for students to find an example of this um, here a video. And so I was thinking, um, her syllabus actually talks about um, this particular Beyonce song. And um, her syllabus says, we're surrounded by popular media portrayals, likening love to mind-altering substances. Billy Holiday's lover goes to a head, Beyonce is drunk in love, and The weekend compares his lover to an anesthetic novocaine. And so the assignment is to critically review a song or a movie of choice. So um, what I did here is I took the uh, free tool and I took the YouTube video of Beyonce's song and I that as a prompt um, that you could have as a faculty member or the student could start commenting on the video itself. And what's unique about video ants, this ant refers to annotation. And it's a timestamp annotation. So you would be using this um, specifically where you want students to do it, um, a really in-depth analysis of the content in the video. Or if you have some lecture content and you want them to put in the muddy point where they really have a question about what you're, you're lecturing about. So we have um, someone in the audience who has um, gone into video and, and um, this is my account I'm logged in here. And I put one question here, so the timestamp is um, right at the um, two minute and 22 second mark. So if I start playing it, <laughs> okay, you'll see that Molly just put in a comment about the video as well. If she wanted to, she could respond to my prompt by clicking on this respond button. I'm gonna move this along the timeline just so you can see as it plays. Oh, okay. So you wrote this message. The message here seems like a glorification of drinking that doesn't match realities. And so I can also write back to her. And see. Um, and so you can see how, how this functions where she put in an annotation and hers is green. And this is a tool that you can use um, asynchronously, so that student, one student can make a comment on the video on a Tuesday, and another student can make a comment on the video on a Wednesday. It's not necessarily, it's really not meant to be a tool that's used live. So that, that is an option. Get to my presentation here. I feel like I lost my presentation. Okay. So another example I just want to share with you um, in the way that VideoAnt was used is 
in a, um, a business class last fall, they had a guest speaker come in, and the faculty member took the recording of the live guest speaker. This was an online class, and he put the recorded live session into video and, and then he turned it into an assignment and asked the students to respond to the guest speaker, which is Walgreens. Um, and so this is a vertical listing of all the students. It's color coded, so with that particular comment by that student is there on that timestamp. And so um, this one particular student um, was able to say, I enjoyed Greg's presentation and his enthusiasm for technology and what technology can do for Walgreens for all of customers. The more I contemplate the technology and it makes the business to consumer relationship, the more intrigued I am about how Greg used to be interact with the rest of the Walgreens population. I'm curious how organizations maintain the line of sight to new technology, the technology and emerging trends, and still make time for innovation and so it's a way for the faculty member to keep the conversation going after the guest speaker came in. So another another option for the tool. Okay. Um, now I want to segue right into the use of quizzing, and I want to talk to you about a tool called HP. It's a free, open source tool, and like Video Ant, you can take a pre-existing YouTube video or any other video and simply pull it into this website. And I um, use the interactive video feature and it's fairly, fairly easy to use and it has a lot of nice um, components to it. Um, first off, just as you know, to reinforce why we're quizzing our learners, um, in this particular instance with H5P, um, it's definitely adding an element of interactivity, but it's also giving them immediate feedback on how they do in their quiz questions. This is an example of a video where an MIT professor is talking about active learning strategies. Um, this is linked to the H5P website. Right here, so I'm showing you this example from, from my account. Move this up all the way a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is the number of interactive features that H5P has in addition to quizzing, and they're all displayed here. These little icons here, and I'm going to go through them and show you some of the interactive features you can add um, with this tool. Um, so we're, we're playing the video. Well, active learning is the idea that students to really learn something, to really understand something, have to be actively involved. And that just sitting passively and listening to a lecture really doesn't help students develop the higher order cognitive processes that they need to really, really understand something. So you can listen to something, you can watch a movie, you can watch TV, and you can generally get the plot. Just move it a little closer. Often in the lectures, that students will sit in the lecture, they'll write down what's being said, but they're not really engaged with the material. Okay. So it stops, you can't go any further, I set it up this way, and then you're presented with a question. Um, what are some examples of active learning? So, uh, select all that apply in the list below. Um, brainstorming would be one, and um, listening to a lecture, not necessarily unless you're teaching students how to do some active note-taking. Um, reading is not necessarily um, but self-reflection is. So let's just say that we, on purpose, make a mistake and we select lecture and we do a check. Uh, I set it up so that you get some feedback when it's incorrect and then um, it tells you to continue, but you'll notice where we are in the progress bar and what just happened. It sent 
it's kind of like, well, you know, after it sends you back to the beginning. So it has an adaptive feature, which you don't necessarily have to use. But the idea is it could, you could actually take the learner right back to a particular point in the video where they should have picked up that information. So it's a nice, sophisticated aspect of this interactive video tool. So I'm going to um, is it free until you want to add in like that? Is that kind of how it works? It's, it's open source and it's all free. And um, it's um, the lead company that um, I know is a Norwegian company. It's many people who have been doing the code behind this. And it is a concern in terms of you know, who's standing behind it, but um, it is widely used and it, it just seems to be a very well supported um, option. The lecture, they'll write down what's being said, but they're not really engaged with the material. Okay, so we'll do the, um, the correct option here, brainstorming and self-reflection. And then you get a star, and then we're going to continue. So active learning is this idea of people. And I'm going to move along, and here she's. And given opportunities within the lecture to apply what's being taught, or what's being the topic at hand. She was talking about a specific strategy for active learning, where she actually literally throws a plastic beach ball out into her class and has whoever catches the ball. And question and so I just created a link to that other YouTube video which is not necessarily you know best practice because you're sending the learner away but I just want you to see that, that um, how many different interactive features there are available for this um, interactive video in um, H5P. Instructionist point of view which really says that as I said before to understand People have to make meaning of a topic. They have to construct their own meaning. And we show the research that really shows that this is true. For higher level cognitive processes, people have to be actively engaged. And there's research to show that. We also show the classroom based research. So, Freeman's 2014 paper. Okay, so what I did was I went out and found the actual articles yeah, referencing. And then you can click on that and actually get it reading and then we go a little further and I, I created these little um, what they call um, bookmarks and so again you know when we talked about signaling to learners that, that you have like distinct chapters in a video you can use this interactive um, feature here of adding bookmarks that label each section of the video So this idea that there's a 12% decrease in the failure rate in courses that use active learning, to me, is pretty compelling. Okay, so I'm putting in another quiz question here, and this is a true or false question. She was just saying that um, the research was showing that um, there's a reduction, a 12% reduction in failure rate across firms that use active learning strategies. So true or false, which is researchers have not been able um, so that would be false. Let me keep on yeah, we should all be using active learning. After three minutes, we, they can either share their comments with someone else or maybe we just report out to the larger group. That, that, if they just report, if they just write down and then report back, that's a pretty good example of active learning. So this is another feature where you can do fill in the blank. So this is another kind of quiz question. So um, having them type in, reporting out. And I actually had to change it so it wasn't case sensitive because the first time it was case sensitive and I kept getting it wrong and I was wondering um, what was going on there. But um, there. It's a pretty simple, uh, it's, and then the last Why did I ask you to think about it? Is, Why did I ask you to take um, three minutes before we have oh, this? So I'll try to deconstruct the exercise for them, showing them uh, the advantages for the learning. And as its name implies, it comes at the very end of the video, and it's meant for you to put in some sort of a summary um, question about the entire contents of the video. Um, so choose the correct statement. 
And obviously we want to choose the one that are easy to implement, continue. Um, so that is um, an example of H5P and um, it has in addition to um, I'll just show you, in addition to interactive video, which is here, um, there are many, many other things you can do with H5P. And what's, um, how many of you use um, Rampages or WordPress? Okay. So if you're using um, WordPress, there's an actual plugin for um, for WordPress, for Moodle, for um, Drupal, and some. I think that's got it. But there's a there's a plugin so you can actually build HIP interactive objects or an interactive video directly in RAM pages or WordPress. So I have a question. If you can. Next yes, students quiz questions. Can we export that data? I don't have them in the right? so, No. So it's just for their own education. It's not for yes. their own recording. Yes. Yes. Um, so the other thing is that if you're using Blackboard, you can bring what you create into Blackboard. So um, how many of you have used Blackboard? So here's an example of a Blackboard course. And Okay. Um, this is an example of a Blackboard course, and so what I did is I created an item and I embedded the code into the item, and then this video is now embedded in the course. So it's a, it's a relatively easy thing that you can do. Um, one of the things I wanted to share with you is that next Wednesday, we're going to have a drop in um, open lab time in the room right, um, right here, which is known as the cafe area, academic department. So, any of these tools that I'm introducing, if you want to drop in and have some hands on support as you're working through using the tool, um, it's next Wednesday um, from 12 to 2. It's our Agora and uh, it's work. Any questions? So, no, no, it's just an object that you're creating, a learning, a learning object. Okay. Okay. So that's H5P. Um, Another um, feature I want to share with you uh, is Kaltura, and Kaltura is a um, tool where you can generate your own video. It also has uh, web-based video hosting, and it has a quizzing feature. It is a university-supported tool, and that's why I'm going to suggest it. It also has a value add over H5P in that it integrates directly with the Blackboard library. Center so that if you add a quiz to your video, the performance um, for that individual student, that grade gets recorded in the grade center. Um, anybody use Kaltura already? How, how do you use Kaltura? Um, well, I put some of our articles on there, but what I have that we get everything transcribed and we get them live cash and so then we have the transcript and I upload that directly to YouTube and I don't think Contour has that feature yet. It does the automated yes, machine captioning. Yeah. So that's just not mm -hmm. okay. Yeah it, um so what I'm going to show you, you can actually bring a YouTube video into Kaltura, add the quiz questions, and then if you want to have a participation degree and have multiple um, video quizzes towards a participation course, um, that's a good way um, to use it. So this is what an actual quiz question looks like in Kaltura. What is meant by active learning and what the multiple choice options. Um, what I'm going to move over to is my account, 
where I created a quiz question, and this is in Kaltura. This is a um, just a 31 second um, promotional video for uh, VCU. It always starts off with this welcome message, letting your learners know that there's going to be um, a quiz. And there's a downloadable area where students can actually have the quiz questions written out as well. The job market is unpredictable. So I created my own job while I was still in school. I feel like my community doesn't have a voice. So I speak up through my art. There are potential health risks of being surrounded by smart technology. So we develop products that outsmart it. The world's problems aren't waiting for me to graduate. Okay, here's the first question. Um, at VCU, students are encouraged to think creatively about their professional paths, or their costs. I didn't, I'm not really sure I put any classes into this, but, um, so you just see how it also um, pops up in the timeline. And so we're selecting it. They're waiting to be and what you notice is you don't get immediate feedback with the counter of this option, unlike H5P. So that's something that you have to weigh out um, with, with using it. Um, here's another quiz question. What is meant by active learning? Solved. That's how I make it real. OK. And then take a moment to review your answers or submit. And then it tells you um, how you did. Um, I think the second one I already answered. So, but anyway, it just shows you um, your results um, for the quiz. <laughs> OK. Um, the end of this presentation, I have links to the tools um, that I covered, Video Ant, HIP, Kaltura, and then um, two websites that I thought would be helpful for you um, to support this. So, any questions about the content that I presented? How do you do a mixture of, say, the teaching video, like the first one that you showed for about open government, with a YouTube video clip. Can you do that here? Or how do you combine those into combine a single them. learning unit? Um, well, the, the easiest way if you're making it for yourself, Cultura um, still doesn't allow you to do that kind of splicing and editing, um, but you can something where you create a little introduction to a webcam and then embed that and then right below it the YouTube video. Um, could I, if, if you're using a YouTube video that's not yours, um, that's what I would say because to actually take, if it was your YouTube video, like could I show you how to put your introduction and then have it edited together with your other video. But since it's something you're pulling from YouTube, I would say, keeping those two things separate, but embedding them within Blackboard so that they watch the introduction and then watch the video. So the students doing it would have to first click on the introduction, get that going, and then click on the Right, and I'm saying that only because you're talking about taking like, outside content that's not your fault, right? Um, and as soon as culture does, they said that their next, um, um, their next big change, which they wouldn't give us a date for, um, that they were actually going to make us do, do something like that and add those two things. Um, and we could talk with a lot of things like that if you want to learn how to do that kind of editing or with a different program. Um, I, I could help with that if it's something like, you know, not a one off. Okay, great. Are folks familiar with VoiceThread? VoiceThread is a university supported tool, and that would be another way that you can string together um, sequentially multiple the YouTube videos um, or even um, PowerPoint slides and videos. So I didn't include that in my presentation today, but that um, 
is another um, option for you. Um, and as I said, it is, um, it is a university supported tool. Um, so this also has the ability to um, create some quizzing. I think they would have a better display here. Um, but anyway, that, yeah, okay. <clears throat> that's what the interface, <clears throat> that's what the interface looks like. Um, <clears throat> and um, it's meant for having discussions around any kind of media. Uh, <clears throat> and you can create an assignment builder in Blackboard so that you can give them participation grades. You can use it in all the different kinds of ways. Um, and there is a crazy function to it too. Um, so that, that's another option for you. This Yes, yes. If, if you really want to do multiple choice cuisine, I recommend Kaltura cuisine. This one is, is strength is really about, you see all these thumbnail icons, those are, you know, the mock students who would be in your class, and they each have an opportunity to make a comment on what's on the screen. They can comment text by text by audio or by video and so it's really it's orientation is really about having a discussion around media um, or small groups of students presenting and then having a conversation around the student presentation the strength is not quite so much about um, but you can you can assess that um, so if you come to agora we have Agora, um, who's drop-in hours every Wednesday and Thursday, 12 to 2. So if you want to know about the spread, uh, I can help you as well, or any of the other people. Okay, like, how for quizzing? You set it to a person who can take the quiz and replace their group, so that you have that option. Um, that's, a, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure. Um, I don't think so. This is um, my I account. You can you can try it out and get back to you. You might you might be able to do that. Mm -hmm. I would want to try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is my account, and I I can yeah I can definitely try it out. Um, okay. Any other questions? While I just take a quick look. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the Kaltura editor. And um, when you're setting up a quiz, there's this section called details. And this is where you can elect to show your welcome page, which you saw or not. You need to uncheck this. Or you can customize your welcome video here, your welcome message. Um, you can determine whether or not they're allowed to download the questions. Um, and then there's a section about scores, show the scores or don't show, show them, and then the experience. Um, so to answer your question, you can allow viewers to change their answers before submitting a quiz. So that's perhaps the best, the best we can do. Um, they don't know at that point right or not. Right. What I'm, what I'm thinking, if, if you're familiar with um, setting up a Blackboard test, is that within that setting in Blackboard, you can you can make those changes. So I, I'd have to look at that in um, Blackboard. And see. So I'll try to get back to you. So unless there's any other questions, I. Well, thank you very much for coming, and um, 
and a plug for coming next week to the uh, drop in for our session. And thanks for joining us from Qatar. Joanne? I enjoyed it very much. It's very uh, Sorry, I, um, the audio component isn't as good as it could be. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.